Harry, I want to welcome you back to the Jägermeister Work Great Mansion. to be back, as usual. Birds off the deep end. We're here talking not so much deep water, but we're talking about catching bait. Let's which, talk about it. It's very important to have. You know, live bait fishing this time of year is huge. You know, you get out there, to me, go out 4 o'clock in the afternoon and fish till dark. This time of year is, is when you get your best bites at, at that. And having pilchards, runners, uh, whatever you can get, uh, penfish if you have to. Uh, what do you use? What Which bait do you use and stuff like that? We've got... Obviously, all different sabiki. Some are very expensive. Some mm -hmm. are, are, are pretty inexpensive. Uh, now, which one do you use? It, it's just when the water's all cloudy and, and murky and stuff like that, you can get away with the less expensive sabiki rigs and stuff like that. And it, the best ones that you can use is the ones with the fish skin on them. They actually have fish skin uh, on the rig itself and with the little glow beads on the top. And obviously, you know, there's several in a rig, six to eight on one rig. Right. What's really important when you're using these sabikis is at the very bottom, you want to put the right amount of lead on the sabiki rig because if, if it's too light and you get those big pilchards or thread fins, right. they'll, one will just take that whole rig and mess it up and tangle it up and then you lose the whole rig. And, and you really don't want that to happen. You want to be able, when, the, when they're biting, you want to be able to sit, start stringing these guys. So you're going to have a heavy lead normally on the bottom for, say, if you're doing gogs and stuff like that, you're going to want to a four ounce lead, something really heavy. If you're doing threads and pilchards, you don't want a four ounce. You want a, a one ounce to a two ounce, and you just mix it up. Now, when that water is really clear and it's really hard, the fluorocarbon is the ticket. They're so a lot more expensive. So there's sabikis that are more expensive, but they've got fluorocarbon lined so the bait fish don't see them. Right, and I've been out there, and uh, we're, we're catching one pen or, uh, uh, thready or pilchard at a time. We're literally just killing it. One of the charbo guys came up and just started stringing them. And I had the, the Econo one, and he had obviously the good one. He's, you know, he's out there, and that's what he does for a living. And I found out exactly which one he's using, and we were able to do it. All right, so Harry, let's show people what happens when you bring the fish in. We recommend that we use a D hooker. D hooker, for... little R and R. Uh, now, D why hookers. is that? Why is it important not to touch the well, bait? Well, number one, if, if you ever actually grab a goggle eye or anything and throw it in the live well and look at him, you'll see your handprint on the goggle eye. Okay. You'll actually see that print. So you've knocked the slime off that bait. So it's very important, especially with gogs or your runners and stuff like that, to, to not touch them. And they do, they do last longer. Uh, pilchards and all that, the D hooker is just quick and easy. And what you want to do now, normally that bait is hanging down. Right, so what you want to do is you take your D hooker right. and just slide it down. You get on the hook. Now that bait's hanging here. You're going to take it and reverse it and hold it so now the bait's hanging down. Got so it. what you'll do is just shake that. And over that, the live over well. Over the live well, and it'll just drop right in. It's so much easier than trying to unhook it and grab it and just shake it. They fall off, go to the next one, go to the next one, and it's just quick. It's easy. It works phenomenal. Let's, you got a minute. Let's talk about All right. the cast, cast nets. nets. Cast nets are huge. Um, you got different size meshes. The most common is a 3 8 Right. But if, if the water's a little clear, you want to go to a half inch, something that's going to sink a little quicker and get down deep. The only disadvantage with a half inch is the fact is that you gill a bunch. If the pilchards are small, then you end up with a Christmas tree. I'm sure we've, we've all seen that, and it's just, just solid okay. pilchards stuck in there. And let's, let's say that happens, because, I mean, we're going to talk about cast nets throughout mm -hmm. the whole show. Mm -hmm. Guys, here's what I want to tell you. If you do get a Christmas tree, you have a bunch of these, two things you can do. Put your uh, cast net away in the place <laughs> in this bucket with the baits on it. Let them dry out a little bit. And then when you get home, or what you can do is simply let the leads hang over the side of the boat and pop the net like this. And when you pop this, it <laughs> tightens up this, and a lot of times it'll cut the fish's head off, and Just then the body right of, the, of, the bil of the pilchard or whatever it is will fall in the water. Yep. So it's your choice. For me, it seems to work best when we let them dry out a little bit because then they pop off right. a lot easier. Yeah, and if they don't, you just pinch the head off and then you got to rinse yeah. your net another, off. Another good thing is just take a, like a billy club or something, just slide it down the net too. That also pops their heads off pretty easy. 